we There's are more streaming. Tools Hopefully that means now, we're and so, uh, everything is flowing through the, YouTube back in. I'm seeing things. And really create unique experiences that they want to do. Um, and at Nintendo, right, we I think we're live. Hello, hey. okay, how hello, do you everyone. Like, what does that Welcome mean? to day three. E three day three. And I was commenting on Twitter uh, just a while ago. Somehow this is more exhausting than a normal E three. Uh, it's because we have normal life along with it. Yeah, I was gonna say like I I finished streaming yesterday. We wrapped up E three day two, and I was like, oh, I have to now literally go shovel shit in my backyard because I'm at home and there are still things that need to be done. Um, and they're the ones who yeah, so. And, and at least at E3, like, and I, I think, you know, this has like, I want to say 80% of the work related stress that a normal E3 has, but you don't get the, okay, now that I'm, since I'm not home, I'm going to go and blow off steam. I'm going to go have a drink, hang out with friends, uh -huh. chill out. Yeah. So you don't get that uh, decompression period after, which if... If all the folks that yeah, I, I it, follow uh, and interact with within the game space are any like indication, that. they're all kind of feeling the same. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's E3, yeah. uh, but it's but just different enough in a way that makes it more tiring and somehow. So um, I, I would agree with that for sure. Yeah. It's, it's been a weird <clears throat> experience like for sure. Not not bad weird, just different time. weird, and certainly and we have more tiring than I expected, in, um, despite not uh, being yeah, on my feet all day. In, in the US and yes. Yeah. And I do love that this person on stream right now is wearing a Nintendo Indie World shirt, or is that just? She, well, she's from Nintendo. Oh. Well, hello, uh, Nintendo so person. We want to make sure that yeah, she's like a product uh, manager or something. I, I, I saw, saw it popped up. This is just the stuff that we're going into uh, there and uh, whatnot. And I was Jack Jackman. I'm glad you watched the Take Two conference. I'm glad it was really great. We did not. We ended up not doing that because it is was uh, yeah. basically no, no games being shown. It felt weird to commentate over somebody talk about uh, diversity and yeah. inclusivity like when right it's, it's like going to a panel, yeah. like going to a convention panel and being like, we're going to be assholes who talk over all of this. So just make yeah. no Agreed. sense. Give me, give me one sec. Guys. Yeah. I need to grab my phone. I'll be right back. Oh, for sure. No worries. Uh, in yeah, the no, meantime, obviously that was, Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say in the meantime, uh, for those who missed it earlier, I am working on a, uh, um, uh, deep dive for Mario plus rabbits. Uh, yeah. going through the script right now. Uh, I have about one page of notes left to go. I'm guessing it's going to be about four pages long in total. Um, and, uh, hopefully be good. I know it's a bit late compared to other people, but I'm hoping to have it up before Nintendo. So there is Yeah, I, I teased it in our announcement in our discord about the schedule change today. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got a five dollar super chat from Wapi Mulinga. You're back. How's it going? Thank you so much. Saying any luck with the Final Fantasy Origin demo? Has it finally worked and the data is no longer corrupted? No, nope. I understand it. It's still corrupted. Yeah, still waiting on that too. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a bit of a bust. Oh, complete. Sketch MPM with a two dollar donation says we went live mid sentence a minute ago. FYI, so that makes no sense because it shows that we've been live with for three minutes in the back end. So I'm not yeah. sure about that. Actually, that's weird. A large company would that's very odd because they couldn't invest multi millions of dollars in a project hmm. that wasn't comparable to something that exists. Um, and that's the uh, I'm not sure about that one, but well, thank you either way. Yeah, thanks for letting us know. That's just so weird. I'm not sure what happened there, but so it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Thank you. And Eastman, yeah, this is a uh, uh, general indie presentation. A small yeah. Team of a handful. And, and then um, just popped up. That's what weird. happened with the Take Two panel. Is essentially we found out thanks to our Discord member, it's ATM. Thank you so much for letting us know that it was mm -hmm. they weren't showing games or announcements. It was a panel on diversity and inclusivity in games, which of course is awesome and important and right in line with our values at GVG. But it didn't feel like the right format or context for a reaction stream. So we decided you don't talk to over something like that. Instead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we didn't want to. Exactly, it's it's too important, uh, you know, to be talking over something like that. Uh, <laughs> and we have another five dollar donation from T Bucket Twenty Three saying, "Speaking of indies." Has anyone on GVG checked out Chicory, A Colorful Tale? It's quite clever. Sorry, it's quite clever, and Lena Rain composed the music. You know, I've heard of it, and I, I, that sounds great because I love Lena Rain. She did an incredible job on Celeste. So it, I've heard of it, but I haven't played it. I, I've and, seen the, uh, it's like the coloring book uh, game, uh, indie game. And oh, okay. Yeah, it, no, it's really it around. good. I've seen the reviews come out, and they, I've, it's been generally positive. So Right, right. Pretty cool. Uh, uh, we got King. 
Oh, got it. Yeah. Waffle King, thank you very much for the uh, $3.99 donation where it's our little lemon boy hanging, hanging, hitting a present to a bird. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I think it's a lime. Right? right? Yeah. It's a oh, yeah. It's like a baby lime. Oh, it might be a baby oh, right. lime. Sorry yeah. about that, folks. My wife. Yeah, I think it's a baby lime. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, my wife surprised uh, me. Yeah, with thank the, you again for the super sticker you. Waffle King. And we also have a two oh, euro donation and from Schlunik you know, saying, I want more games. Hey, man, I think we all do. I can yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. Do not expect them, not even from Capcom. Like, yeah. I think yeah, what Capcom's laid out is pretty much what's going to be there. Maybe one extra thing, but. I, I gotta say, uh, even for Nintendo, like I've seen a lot of people say, call out, like, all right, well, Nintendo automatically wins. I would not say that. <laughs> I would just say keep your expectations in check. You know, we, we might be pleasantly surprised by both Capcom and Nintendo, but at least, especially for Capcom, <clears throat> because of what they've said this presentation's about, and it's essentially games we already know about or games that are already out, like Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting. And they only have a 30 minute chunk. It's not a lot of time to get new stuff in there. Yep. Yeah. People keep asking me if I'm hyped for Mega Man announcements, and I'm just like, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be enough shit on the party. But I just don't think so. Maybe, maybe a Battle Network collection. Sketch it. This, this, isn't, this isn't Capcom. Capcom's later. I'm just saying for Capcom later on. For Capcom later, yeah. Exactly. As Indies, great we're going to see today, we'll see. we have no idea. Yeah, a great rule of thumb for E3 right now, this year in general is just go in with low expectations, really people. Mm -hmm. Do not expect anybody to hit it out of the park. Like, I see so many people expecting Breath of the Wild 2. And while I would be yeah. over the moon if we saw it, I am not expecting it. And the reason I'm not yeah, is not because of any inside information or any speculation, but this just seems to be kind of an off year. Yeah. Yeah. I think we could get a confirmation that it may be a short trailer that says 2022, like I said in our, e our Nintendo E3 predictions. We might get a confirmation that it's a 2022 game and maybe some new info, but don't expect a blowout. Don't expect a bunch of Breath of the Wild 2 gameplay. I, I don't I'm, think that's I'm, gonna I'm just going to go further on that and say don't expect any, because then you'll be pleasantly yeah. surprised if there's yeah, any. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That too. And you won't be mm -hmm. raging if there's none. <laughs> Cause, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Highly that's... suspicious that nothing's been spoiled. <laughs> it <laughs> really like, is. I was like, yeah. hmm, maybe there's nothing to spoil. <laughs> right. I mean, we, we really don't know. Um, but yeah, I would say just, you know, in general, hype responsibly, go in with lowered expectations. And, you know, remember, Nintendo hasn't promised us anything. They, you know, they don't, they don't owe us anything other than the direct whatever's in it. So even if you found the rest of E3 disappointing thus far, it's, you know, the, to expect them to save it might not be realistic. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Personally, for, for my, and I still thought the Xbox conference was, was great. I really yeah. I enjoyed it. I, I'd still say Xbox is probably the most solid at this point and uh yeah yeah I, mean, I, mean, I think we'll get some neat additions things here and there stuff you will like but it's not i don't yeah i think the e3 of like oh my god that looks amazing i need that whenever it comes out not really a lot of those this year yeah uh sketch mpm with a four dollar 99 super chat says every insider under the sun says expect to see a new glimpse of breath of the wild 2 but nothing beyond that Hard to imagine Nintendo would choose to show nothing. I'm I'm going to counter that. Uh, I have a group of friends that I trust uh, that I that normally when they tell me what's up with Nintendo's plans, they're usually pretty spot on, and I've not heard that from any of them, not a single one. Um, you know, that being said, I've not heard anything about Nintendo's plans from a reliable source. So, you know, I'm not saying I I've not had people come up and say no Breath of the Wild two. I've literally heard jack shit and um i like it that way because going in i want to be surprised i am actually at the point now where i'm like i don't want to know even if it gets leaked i just don't want to know um but that being said like i i just cannot caution people enough don't get your hopes too high like just don't set yourself up for disappointment because you'll just feel bad and who wants to feel exactly. bad after yeah, a direct wants to, nobody wants um, to feel bad i mean i i mean i felt like i had you know gotten knifed in the stomach after square Enix's <laughs> yeah exactly we went we went into that show pretty hyped yeah. yeah, we learned and, quick. You know, and and it's not as though yeah. I mean, and being disappointed is totally fine. If yeah, mm. being disappointed, it's just the, the and, line starts to blur when you go from being disappointed to pissed off because more was promised or they had yeah. to show more. They right. Don't. 
Um, and in one point, uh, like forty, we got forty minutes of Nintendo. We had forty, what, forty-five, fifty minutes of Square Enix, and most of that was spent on Guardians of the Galaxy. And yeah, it was like twenty-five minutes of Guardians or some shit. Yeah. yeah. I, the one thing I'll say is that, uh, you know, and, and I'll fully admit that there that I'm not fully taking my own advice because I do expect to see the next Smash Fighter at the direct. Yeah, and oh, I think that's I mean, a likely thing. At the very least, we'll I, I agree, that. but at the same time, I'm not practicing what I preach, right? <laughs> um, so I get it, you know, there are things that you get hyped for, things that, you know, things will lead you to believe that you may see something. I'm just saying, if you don't see the thing you want, don't don't get too upset, you know? None of us know what's coming. Um, yeah. You know, until Nintendo way, themselves say it, it's not guaranteed. Mm. By way, Steve, I'm not sure if there's anything you can. Super chat from Light the Fuse. Love you guys. Been a fan since the GX days. Aww. As you got away from Kami Andre just in time. Thank you <laughs> very much for that. Um, you know what? We're, uh, we're just happy to be here, and uh, you know we're all about good vibes here. They're doing their own thing. We're doing our own thing. We're happy. We're here, and we're happy to be doing E3 with you guys. So yeah, thank absolutely. you, Light the Fuse, for that donation. And I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Derek. You were saying. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's something you can easily fix, uh, since we're not too far from the start of it. Uh, but you are coming in a little crackly, at least on my end. Right. Oh, uh, no, I can't deal with slightly. That. <laughs> it'll it'll drop me out of the Discord call and break the stream. And yeah, sorry guys. Uh, does everybody in the audience hear me? Okay, I, I notice that this is a Discord thing, and all y'all in OBS are just hearing the straight feed from my mic, so unfortunately my compatriots will have to suffer through it. Okay, hey, look, at least, it's our hey, friend Gregor. I'm willing to suffer if nobody else has to. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> all good. Yeah, if, we Discord, can look, if we can suffer through that Square Enix conference, we can get through that. Discord does not like high-end audio hardware. It's just something I've uh -huh. learned over the years, but... Uh, man, you know, I'm a little jealous of the setup they got here. Like, I mean, obviously very, very sponsored by Razer and DoorDash, which thanks for the five guys, DoorDash. <laughs> it's quite good. Somebody asked me what pizza I'm eating. I'm eating a burger. My my wife ordered it and it got delayed and it showed up right as we went live. And I'm not going to not eat it. <laughs> so, God, I, I, I love a good five guys burger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Diamond Death with a $5 super chat says, Good Vibes Gaming Limited Run Games is having a one-hour show that starts at 4 p.m. Uh, 30 minutes before Capcom. Will you be watching the first 30 minutes? Probably not. No. Uh, we have a packed day. I, no, probably not. Um, and, and it would suck to bail out of a presentation to go to another one, especially because those are yeah. separate streams and we didn't plan for it. Um, what I will probably do is uh watch it personally up until the point that we need to go live and just talk about it in the pre-show um but limited run i mean i like them but i don't know that you know like they always just release games that are already out there somewhere else so yeah you, physical um, versions of games that are out yeah yeah and oh my goodness, it just... It so, just, um, it, it, I, I'm a little unclear on when this actually starts. I, I guess maybe this is the segment? Hopefully, I mean, there wasn't any kind of know. solid, like, hey, here's the indies yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, the schedule officially is at noon, but... And I didn't know about Moonlighter until somebody on our subreddit was like, this is a great hmm. game you need to play. And, but well, they seem to have already been talking about indie games. Doing indie for well, they've while. been talking in, yeah. about so indies in general, but just how reviews. they yeah. kind of matter. I don't... We know why you're there. It's weird. So, it looks like it's okay, about here we go. to start. I, I think it's about to start. It, it may be, yeah. set to come your way soon. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we're, we're starting now pretty All much. Right. Cool. Here we go. There we go. All right, nice. We're starting on time. Right. Super proud of our good friend Greg Miller for hosting E3 this year, by the way. Yeah, man. I thought that was him. I haven't watched, I haven't seen him in a while, so I was like, did not recognize the beard. I, I sincerely hope he's involved in the next, you know, live in person show. Mm, that'd be cool. Same. Is this, uh, this th is was that Grow Home? Yeah, it is. What is that? Oh, it's not Grow Home, it's some paper airplane. Game. It kind of reminds me of the aesthetic of uh, Hot Shot Racing, which is a great indie game that you should play if you like arcade racers. See, my first thought was these fields is like flower. Yeah, I agree with Derek on that one. It's like polygonal flower. Yeah, I could, I could see that. Now this, this is cool. Ooh, yeah, this, yeah, it's like somebody clearly flower. played that WarioWare airplane game a bit much. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I do love this. This yeah, looks it, like such a chill ass game. It does. Oh, Flower it is like one of the that, most um, chill games I've ever played. 
It has kind of like that slight virtual racing <clears throat> look to it, the angular polygonal environments. I, I love this. I like how you have different paper racing, sorry, not airplane racing. sides. So this looks I guess great. It's just a matter of trying to get further and further and use those wind currents. I am so life. all about this. Yeah, life I'm life. here for this. That's cool. Yeah. August 6th? Man, my ah, birthday Steam month is a good though. month. Damn. Ah, bummer it's not on console. But it still looks really cool. If it does well, I'm sure it'll Could get it ported. Works. Yeah, yeah. if it does well, it'll probably get there eventually. Wow, let's keep going. Turn you off. Showing off three games from this developer. Decidedly different in tone. <laughs> Yeah. This kind of reminds me of uh, Eve, which is like a space combat sim. Yeah. Like, my dad would probably love this. And definitely not for me, but it is pretty to look at. No, it is very pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, Cryptmonger, this one I believe is uh, about 30 minutes long. Yeah, that's our understanding. And thank. Thank God for this. I really like uh, one that it's kind of brief, and two, yeah, that that it's indie focused. E3 right. needs more indie focused content for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. That's uh, that's these are definitely hard genres. Like unless you're into them, I, it's hard to yeah, sell. Definitely, <coughs> probably <coughs> not not our thing as much, but. Hmm. It looks like a great representation of what it... Oh, man, yeah, this is really, yeah. really in-depth. It's cool, though. <laughs> it is cool. Uh, speaking of cool stuff, Late Night Sprites with a $2 super chat says, uh, Indie reveals equals one Steam sale will destroy my wallet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I hear you on that. Like, I, I end up picking tons of Indies up during Steam sales, so... I stay away from Steam because I just know it's a, it's a trap. It's, oh, it is. <laughs> I, I have... Way too many Steam points from buying too much crap on, on Steam. Town, <laughs> what is this? But I don't remember sending you an invitation. I killed you myself. But where's the fun in that? This looks no, cool. Like it's almost looks like a oh, almost Doom-like <laughs> FPS with the way the graphics are kind of sprite. Ish. This reminds me of a Void Bastards, like a cell shaded okay. FPS or a sprite looking. FPS. Yeah, kind of like classic Doom, except anime. Oh, okay, this, this is style cool. really it, clicking with it me. A little bit reminds oh. me of I think 13. Oh man, like the art style of 13 thick outlines. This yeah, is cool. I love the fact that it looks like an old comic book. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Jeez. <laughs> More violent than you'd think, that's for sure. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, that guy's head exploded. Yeah. Old friend. <laughs> okay, All I want aces. this. That looks cool. Yeah. I gotta say, that looks pretty awesome. Doomnoir.com. Okay. <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, that really looks like Doom, but there you go. So... No release date, so it's obviously still pretty early in dev, but that looks really cool. Mm -hmm. What is this? This, I mean, again, and yet another FPS, but at least it's colorful, it's bright. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the first thing for me. It's gameplay. It's colorful. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's all the things that the big pressers have kind of been light on, <laughs> except for <laughs> FPS. Some kind of capture flag thing? It's like a tether type thing going on. I wonder if we'll get claimed for this music. I guess I'll kill you now. The drone is down. The drone is mine. This is colorful and all that, but it's sort of generic. Yeah. The the character designs feel very generic to me. Armor activate. It basically seems to me like a type of we're trying to do Overwatch. Yeah, it, it feels like not Overwatch, basically. Mm -hmm. That said, I don't want to, you know, of course, Overwatch without that blizzard. Well, I don't want to discount all the incredible work they're doing. But yeah, no, no. this doesn't really stand out to me very much. A couple are asking if it's VR. 
I don't Which think that would make it a bit more. Could be, yeah, I don't think so. I guess it's always possible. We'll find out soon. He just punched her the straight up. <laughs> that was kind of funny to see him just walk up and punch her straight in the face. Yeah. Like, geez. Like, oh man. Larceny. 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 Okay. Mm. Eh. I wish it is VR. Wow, this, somebody just but... called it straight oh, it is. up. Oh, yeah. Called it. Nice. That makes it a bit more interesting, that type of game in VR. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a little bit more interesting there. Toy Soldiers. Looks fun. Yeah. I don't think I mean, I've not my kind of this. fun, but Toy Soldiers. Yeah. Oh, on Switch. Okay, oh. cool. On everything. I mean, I used to play Army Men back in the day on PC. That was always fun. Oh, yeah. Mm. Authentic World War One battles. All right. All right, then. Yeah, like as Steve said, this definitely looks, you know, cute, but it's just not my... It looks fun, but it's just not my kind of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's an audience for this. I'm just not part of it. Yeah. I'm still stuck in that first game, the uh, Paper Airplane one. Collision that one was incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that what a good start. Amazing. That and the uh, Mafia game. Yeah, the Mafia, yeah. Uh, Fallen Aces, that looks so cool. I love yeah, it. Accurate World War One battles and they have a to uh, robot. <laughs> uh-huh. Or robot. This game occupies a really weird space between, like, an actual war sim and goofy, like, toy game. Uh, that was mm -hmm. tough. Right. Geller, thank you very Ooh, much for the $10 donation, saying, Good afternoon, guys. I got the Platinum Rift apart. It was fantastic. Nice. My question, do you guys see Insomniac moving forward without Rivet and the new cast? God, no. After the reaction to Rivet and the new cast, it is uh, definitely... I feel like they are definitely keeping role. her around. I, I, yeah, I don't yeah, think they're going to... Yeah, she's here to stay. Yeah, I think so, too. And I haven't even played it yet, so um, I barely even started it. But I Especially the way that game ends. Game. Like, they are keeping her around. Yeah, for sure. Just based on what I've seen, I think she's she's here for the long haul. And I hope so, because I really like her design. This looks cool. Yeah, it does. Some sort of... I feel like it was another like, UFO like game where you play like UFO and battle yeah. things all around you. I forget what it was. Uh-oh, cow. Cool. Why, is, why are these bovines out to kill the UFO? Of, um, oh god! Oh god! I just got it. Cow, you know, yeah. UFOs abducting cows. Now the cows oh. are fighting back against the UFOs. Yeah. It looks almost visually. It looks like a cross between like Pixel Junk Shooter and Ori, which is a really interesting combination. I yeah, I totally want to check this out. Yeah, cows versus UFOs. Okay, sure. Diablo cow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What the? Moolander. What in Moo the? I love that name. That trailer wow. is so it's weird. It's on everything. For a game Spring that's 2022. You have no. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to check that out. We tackle new technologies <laughs> and overcome many challenges in the pursuit of our creative vision. So that just makes me think it's like IGDA, it's a Zoolander cow parody. And empower all <laughs> game developers around the world. We provide community, hmm. mentorship, Calabunga. research, knowledge, and Really moving. <laughs> We're here for you when you need it, so you can advance your career while keeping your health. An ad for GDC, huh? Join us and there help you go. make our industry a better I mean, I guess it's, it's appropriate enough. It's just kind of a weird tonal shift. and in the future. Mm -hmm. Help make a difference. Well, I see Mew, Retsuko, and Ocarina of Time. I like this person already. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's, it's an ad for IGDA, not GDC. Oh, okay. It says all an ad in the uh, live audience chat. Puppies in space. All right. Oh, it's a, you're playing a different dogs shooting that than a looks shooter. awesome. Oh, my this God. Ah, cool. uh, yeah, I love this. Is that just a baby floating in space? I mean, maybe. Yeah. This looks great! This is like a oh bullet God. hell version of Gato Roboto. <laughs> yeah. yeah! 
Oh, I want to play this. I love the visual style. Uh, Hy- Hyrulean 1000 with a uh, five pound do- or five euro donation says, thanks for your coverage, GVG. Steve, I hope that burger was super tasty. Also, I'd die if they announced a remake of Kid Icarus Uprising tomorrow. Burger was fantastic. Thank you. Oh, I would Thank do. you for the super chat. Oh, I, yeah. Um, I think we would all be very happy. Very happy. Oh, a rabbit, that. a dog, a cat, a bear. I totally yeah. want to play that game. <laughs> I missed the release info. Though. Did it say this year? I missed it as well. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Also, yeah, uh, here's Bingo saying, right? I hope it's called Shoot 'em Pop. <laughs> oh, night, yeah. This. I don't know what this is. Stealth. Game, I guess? I don't know. The visual style is very reminiscent of like mid 90s PC games. Like, obviously, with enhanced lighting effects, but a lot of it visually kind of reminds me of, like, the look and feel of older PlayStation PlayStation 1 and and PC games from from that era. Yeah. By the way, uh, Derek, it's called Bio Interstellar Arc, which which stands for BART, which is called BART, and uh, no release date, but it is on Switch and Steam. Cool. Yeah, BART, I want to check out. This... mm, Eh, not really doing it for me. I kind of checked out. Yeah. What is this cat Ooh, platformer? Cat yeah, what is this? Maybe. Don't know. A cat for yeah. Oh man, they totally ripped oh, off. Oh nice. Uh huh. Oh, it's like Super Paper Mario. This is that too. Yeah, or Fez, yeah. Super Paper Mario Fez. It does the same, the perspective shifting thing. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. But the two D three D thing is a bit different. Yeah, yeah it's a bit more unique. Look possum. <clears throat> I'm getting a slight feeling of jankiness from this, but I'm still Yeah, intrigued. it still seems a little early, but yeah. potential. I'm still intrigued, so. though. I, I like the concept. I like the visual style. I love the cuteness. Mm-hmm. Uh, Salty K with a five... Make a ghost jump. Okay. Make a, uh, Salty K I, with everything. a $5 donation saying, After Rift Apart, I can't wait to see what Insomniac uh, can do with another Spider-Man Ooh. game. Also, I love you guys for being the best E3 coverage out there. Well, thank you so much. That's thank you very much thank for you. that. And, uh, uh, yeah. Insomniac tends to just get better and better as a console goes on, goes on. So, we'll be looking at Rift Apart like, man. How That is just not as good as what their later games are. Yeah, huh. What is this, by the way? This looks kind of cool. This looks interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Andrew and Carol with a uh, $4.99 Super Chat says, I know this is the Indie Direct, but I would love for Capcom to release HD remasters of Breath of Fire 3, 4, and Dragon Quarter on Switch. I've never played those, so yes, I'd like that. Yeah, I I own one of the Breath of Fire games, but yeah, I would love to... I would love to have pretty much anything on Switch, but... uh, In 400, I do dig dig the... uh, Extra Galactica. But yeah, I, I've really not played a Breath of Fire game. I'd love to do that. Huh? I was yeah. like, okay, I'm here for it. Um, anyway, we just looked at the indie game presentation, and I wrote down a bunch of titles there. Is that the whole thing? Um, Wait, was that it? Yeah. yeah. The one that we just Wait. saw. And I, I love like, that this uh, set. Wow, I was quick at, like, cool. bam, in and out. Um, that was just one <laughs> yeah, of many games. 15 that minutes. Okay. Feel, Aces yeah. yeah. That I wrote down That's my unfortunate. List, so uh, yeah, like Pierto huh. Occult with a $5 super chat. Thank you. Year, says, uh, I played Neko Ghost sure, Jump at PAX like East 2020. Um, the version I played was very level rough, level but it showed stuff, potential. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, good to know. I have never made an action platform. Oh, go. I was going to ask if it looks better since that point, since they obviously don't have a date yet, so it's still coming. I'll make sure to pass it along to you, Dave. I don't think it has a date yet. Late Night Sprites with a $2 like, donation what? saying, my dream is a Capcom SNES Disney, earlier, Disney collection. Oh, that would be, um, that would be well, cool. But, um, Honestly, put that... Yeah. Totally put that Disney Afternoon, Fox afternoon Fox Collection on Switch. Like, why the heck did that not end up on Switch? It's so weird. Oh, right. Disney Afternoon. That would have been nice. Yeah, I agree. I gotta say, this set looks wildly uncomfortable to be sitting on. Yeah. 
Yeah, it does. It does. We'll it visually, about, uh, it's Steam great, Steam but yeah, it doesn't look like it'd be fun to sit on at all. I also love all the URLs. Hey, Neko Ghost Jump is uh, winning the, yeah, I guess, whatever the, the official like E3 the Twitch FPS poll right now for the favorite indie game they saw. Interesting. I, I personally think Falling Aces was up there as well as the Paper Airplane game. I think those were my two favorites. Yeah, that one's not on there, unfortunately. That's under Other, which is kind of weird that they would. I know you. Yeah, I'm watching you. Like, oh, you're watching me. Oh, I appreciate um, that. I'm on the E3 stage. You know the vibe. Oh man, and Michael, I want to talk um, to you about Fallen Frontier. What, what do we do now? Because <laughs> this is like um, I did not expect to be so short. This is actually a good chance to mention. We were talking about our our good friend Greg Miller uh, hosting E3. This is a good time to mention the fact that we are having Greg Miller on today's news tonight on June 21st, next Monday, a week from today. Oh God, I forgot. Get yeah, get hyped for that if you're as big a fan of Greg's work as we are kind of funny RTS obviously anymore. love those guys we've had Tim on the show before we have very graciously been able to book Greg for some of his precious time for the show so get, uh, get, get hyped for that a week from today yeah and and also I should mention that due to a, a weird coincidence in our in our TNT broadcast schedule that will also be our 100th episode that's oh, awesome. I love wow. that yeah that normally would have been uh, this Friday but we're taking tonight off because there is just been a litany of e3 streams that we've been doing yeah and frankly we got to find time to sleep and do other stuff uh so we will we will be taking tonight off um but we will be recording uh kind of like an e3 wrap-up discussion for the first half of e3 which is basically microsoft ubisoft bethesda everybody else and then we'll be doing like a part two which will be mostly nintendo focused nintendo and bandai namco basically exactly nintendo and bamco and uh we will we'll cover those um but that'll be coming later on but tonight there won't be a live tnt show just because we need a little bit of time to recover from all the other live streams we've been doing Mm. And I, John and I am says, no sleep till Nintendo. On. That won't work. You want us on our best game for Nintendo. That yeah. won't work. You don't want us sleeping through Nintendo, man. And, Plus, and we got a three-hour Treehouse stream after the Direct, which they're going to be popping in and out of, but I will be here for it. So. Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll, and, and like I said, I'm going to be trying to get my uh, Mario Plus Rabbids uh, deep dive finished for either tonight or tomorrow morning. So, uh, Real quick, we have an, another $5 super chat from our good friend, uh, uh, Jaden Buck saying, "Picture this: oh, the entire Earthbound no. trilogy remade in HD with the claymation the visuals." Man, that would be cool. Be cool. Um, I, I feel like be. Nintendo has we written off the Earthbound though, franchise. Yeah, yeah, I don't anyway, think I don't think they're really interested in, in um, continuing with it without Shigesato Itoi's involvement, which is a fair take. Yeah, I think the only thing we could ever expect at this point are just re-releases, and maybe one day Mother Three will actually get released here. But beyond that. I wouldn't expect anything but, um, beyond like you okay, know, Earthbound favorite? on we SNES go down online the line Sunday, here? hopefully. David, mm. what'd you pick next? Yeah, for sure. I see, I see um, the wheels Sketcha, MPM with a $4.99 super chat yeah, says, uh, you guys deserve a break, and thanks, thanks for introducing me to Kind of Funny. I recommend binging I, but, uh, Marvel in Review Ranked. Greg Twitter Miller is hilarious. Yeah, Greg yeah, Miller is like a, a super funny uh, guy. Uh, <laughs> um, great guy. Honestly, he's yeah, yeah, as yeah, nice in person uh, uh, as he appears to be when he's creating content. He's just a general all-around really cool dude. Same goes for everybody at Kind of Funny. They're awesome people, and I can't believe that you learned about them from from us <laughs> that is amazing <laughs> makes me feel yeah, happy that really somebody's funny. learning about a, a channel well, the size of kind of funny from us because we are comparatively oh very yeah, small um but exactly. uh you know ash and i have both appeared on kind of funny a few times in the past uh it's always a great experience when they have us on we've had tim gettys and blessing Addy Oye jr from kind of funny here on the show yeah uh great time with both of them can't wait to have greg on for episode 100 which just works out perfectly <laughs> like that's so great i love that um, yeah what stood out to you? Anyway, yeah, and thank you for the super uh, chat. Super generous. I'm glad you're enjoying both our content and theirs. They're a great, they're a great group of people, and they've helped us out personally a lot here at GBG as well. Um, Base Forever, uh, can, going on with a four dollar ninety nine cent super chat, says between futures PC gaming and indie showcases, indie fans have been eating at this E3. Uh, this is kind of a thing I go to a lot. E3 actually has shit tons of indie games every year. Uh, they just get lost in the shuffle of like the big three 
free showing off what they have, you know, and, and a lot of places yeah. don't have the time, the people, or the desire, unfortunately, in some cases, to uh, to cover indies. But uh, I I know that I always try to make fine, try to find time, make time, find time, whatever you want. I'm not Thanos, so I guess find time um, to, uh, to head over and check out indies at E3 in person, and I certainly keep an eye on my inbox for E3 for indie uh, info but it, it is hard it, especially at e3 uh because you're awash in a sea of like triple a previews and stuff like that um, well and the thing is too you also have to like you know consider that unfortunately some people still regard indies as like their own genre when they're not indie games are just like any other game they just have different dev team size and budget but there are still people out there in you know one's audience who will say don't cover the indie stuff i don't care about indies just because they're indies cover the triple a stuff but we want to cover the as well so it's I definitely feel so a, it can be a fine line to walk thankfully i think gvg's community is, is very indie friendly I, I feel so bad because i see so many people popping in and it's like i'm sorry i'm late what i miss nothing it was a cool showcase but everything yeah yeah it was only a 15 minute show i mean um there's some good stuff in there definitely check it out but yeah cyberpunk five dollars from miku sagi saying indies more like wendy's am i right but seriously what's been your guys favorite reveal so far Again, you know, much and love and keep up the great like, work oh, well thank you so much like, Mikusagi. Stuff, but, you know, um absolutely. probably i mean of course yeah. it, it would have been mario and rabbit sparks of hope i guess if we didn't know about that going in because you know, of the leak because yeah uh, that was pretty exciting the but for me i gotta say yeah, forza 5 is still i'm on that forza 5 hype wave still i'm horizon 5 i'm so excited for that game and i love what i saw some great games i'm really looking forward to trying um i'm i'm gonna i'm I'm going to go with what people are, have deigned to be an unpopular opinion. Final Fantasy Origins, man. Or Final Fantasy Origin. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I want to play a demo. <laughs> yeah, I want to play the demo. But I love the idea of the hero just being a guy who is immensely fucking pissed. Like, I, I like... The, you know, like <laughs> it's like it sure is Raph Final Fantasy Edition. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the idea that it's not just a guy who is on some virtuous mission to to take out a, a er, somebody everybody's deemed terrible, but doing so with like a code of ethics and morals. This guy just wants to kill everything in his way, and I'm like, you know what? Especially Relatable. Chaos. Chaos. <laughs> like, he Kratos dresses so like nice. me. He's saying as much, as much as Kratos said Zeus. <laughs> nice uh, stealth MGS3 reference there, by the way, Steve. <clears> Thank you. I was hoping someone yeah. would grab it. Very uh, nice. Of course, man. But yeah, uh, it, it just... Yeah. I, I like the idea of the hero just being angry and like done with this shit. And he's like, yeah, I'll tear your neck open. I don't care. <laughs> I'm so. not sold yet. I, I got to play the demo. I'm looking for, of course, I mean, a big, big Final Fantasy guy, big Square Enix guy. You know, that presentation was abysmal. So I'm certainly checking out Final Fantasy Origin no matter what, but I'm just not quite sold yet. So yeah, the, the thing that I really wanted to point toward with that statement is that the games in the presentation weren't terrible. Honestly, Square had a lot of great games in the presentation, or interesting at least. It was actually just the presentation that was bad. And... Yeah. The yeah. business decision yeah, I, behind the I, Final I, I Fantasy one through change. six remakes to not put them I on still, consoles yeah. at all. I mean that, I but that's the only not, like yeah. game dev level thing that I was upset with at that show was that why Steam and, and phones like that to me drove me insane. But other than that, you know the presentation showed a bunch of stuff that I would be interested in that was just paced really terribly. Really, yeah, and and maybe don't say chaos like eighteen times in one trailer, but. I'm still just like stuck on that whole thing though because like if it was licensed games that's one thing you have to deal with license holders you can't release on what you want to release on fine but it's their own game i don't like i don't get it i really can't. yeah yeah my point is it's easy to dunk on the presentation but that doesn't necessarily equate to the games themselves being bad definitely i'm, I'm still in never be okay yeah like guardians of cool origin i'm i'm you know cautiously interested in babylon's fall is not really doing it for me but that's yeah same not really doing for me but um Find but yeah the guardians looks good and i'm looking for, and life is strange true colors still looking forward to that a lot so I think just hell yeah a uh real quick uh, uh, we also got yeah. ten dollars from sire 3mk doesn't say anything just has a cool hippo putting that hat backwards ash catching style and sticking that thumb out so thumbs up to you too 
Thank you so much. Then Waffle King with another four dollar ninety nine cent donation. We got our Lemon Boy back playing a trumpet with the Lime Baby. Yeah, which is adorable. And then Black Ninja with a five dollar donation saying Shulk's and Shulk's voice. I'm really feeling it. I have a feeling Nintendo's E3 will be great. It's already shaking in my bones. All I'll say is don't get don't yeah hype responsibly. Do not hype yourself up so much that if you don't get what you're hoping for, you get upset. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so I, I, I feel like our indie showcase passed us by. <laughs> it really did, but uh, yeah. I guess with that, I mean, there's not too much really else to say. It's pretty much done in there. I think they're just hopping into whatever's next, so probably should just stop yep. now. Microsoft came out yeah. Swinging. So we'll be back for faster. Capcom, of course, uh, in exactly at, two hours. Well, yeah, it's we'll at five. We'll be starting the stream at two fifteen, but the showcase is at two thirty. So yeah, we'll get we'll be back for Capcom. In a couple hours, and uh, you know, again, just as we said with Nintendo, hype responsibly. Capcom has already kind of seemingly told us what they're going to show, and it's stuff we already know about. So don't go yeah. expecting anything. Maybe tonight. get one extra thing, but I don't even know yeah. about that. I'm I'm telling my fellow Mega Man fans out there, check your expectations. I'm not expecting anything Mega Man related. I'd love to be wrong. We'll see, but I am putting Mega Man on the thumb, regardless, because I yeah. can. Of course you will. <laughs> and I want to. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Oh, so we will see y'all in, in just under two hours. Thank you so much for joining us for this ridiculously quick indie showcase. Yeah. Uh, right. But but we'll catch you again later for the rest of E3 day three. Uh, it's been a good one so far. I liked this presentation, but we'll see y'all in yeah, just under was. two hours. All right. Yep. See you all soon, right. everybody. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.